Save 10% with my code BOBBY10 on raw, organic, grass-fed and grass-finished freeze-dried organ meats from Grassland Nutrition. Link in the description box. All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. If you're new, my name is Bobby. Guys, you wanted me to react to John Fontaine with his video Black Magic and the Fortress of the Muslim. I have no idea what this video is about, nor do I know the background of John Fontaine. However, me and John, we are in touch and God willing, we will do a podcast together soon. With no further ado, let's have a look. It's got a long story short. I started to do business in uh, Sierra Leone, right? And then this was I, my friends. They used to do sihr, but they never used what to call that? it sihr or magic. They actually mm. thought that this was a part of Islam. So, and I know there's differences. Yeah, very interesting because my wife is from Senegal, and in Senegal there is a lot of black magic mixed in with Islam. Senegal is an over ninety percent Muslim population, however, predominantly Sufi Islam is practiced, and I know firsthand that they do mix magic with Islam. Opinion here and there about amulets and things like that, but they used to have amulets, and they used to think that there was Quran inside these amulets. But in mm. reality, it wasn't. It was it was sihr. You know, I opened one of these amulets once, and it's just numbers and uh, names of like shayateen and things like this. Horrible things, bro. Wow. And they used to believe that these things protect them from the police. Mm. Right? From the police. From the police, right? Because they used to do certain things. And they actually gave me one of these things to protect myself from the police. Right? Mm. And a'udhu billah, I, I carried it for maybe two years, bro, in my pocket. I carried this amulet. That was like a wallet or something or a phone to you. Yeah, bro, it was constantly in my pocket. It was like a small amulet. At the time, I didn't know what was inside, right? But these Africans just said, look, this is going to protect you from this, that, and the other. And I'm like, I wasn't, I didn't believe in anything, right? I'm like, okay, just put it in my pocket. Sure. But bro, you That's know, Shaitan? He... Yeah does things to make you believe that that's protecting you. So I remember one time I got pulled in Sierra Leone, the policeman pulled me, right? And he pulled out all the things in my pocket and he pulled this thing out and he went like this, <gasps> right? And it's like the thing burnt him, bro. Oh. And he said, no, no, take, take your things. And he gave him all my things back oh, and then wait. I went. So I'm now starting to get Iman in this thing. I don't realize sure, that it's it not works. the thing that burned him, right? Shaitan wants me to have Iman that this thing is protecting me from police. Yeah. So mm. Shaitan came and maybe touched him or pinched him or flicked him or hit him. Or whisper. Wow, man, that's actually deeper than I thought because I still had the question, how about the cross? I've seen the cross work. I've seen people do miracles under the name of Jesus, etc., etc., you name it. But from this perspective on, it doesn't discard that those things do work. However, why they work is a different question. But to him, I don't Interesting. know. But the bottom line was that Shaitan scared this policeman and I attributed that incident to this thing mm -hmm. do you understand yeah. and this happened about three or four times bro oh, no. like another policeman once he pulled me uh and the same thing happened bro the same thing is like, ah mm -hmm. so anyone who doesn't have knowledge starts to have a man in these amulets sure. thinking that oh so, you know i'm getting power now yeah. You know, I can just buy one of these amulets. I can do what I want. I can go and steal. I mm. can do any crime I want. I can sell drugs, mm. whatever it is, because they, they're starting to have Iman. They're starting to do shirk. And to a certain extent, shaitan will assist. And Allah, of course, you have to understand that this is all with the permission of Allah. Nothing of can happen without the permission of Allah. Yes. But Allah allows, sometimes allows evil things to happen because there's yeah. wisdoms. You are mis literally misguiding yourself. That's the test. Does that make sense? Mm. So, bro, I've seen this many, many times, right? There's many stories. I don't like to go too much into it because the point's been made. But this is how, subhanAllah, I, I, it was the beginning of kind of starting to have iman mm. and belief in these, these false things. 
Another time I went to the northern parts of Sierra Leone uh, in the jungle. It's called Kabala, mm. Kabala, right? <laughs> and it's known as a city for Sihr. With that it's name, very evil, bro. it should be. There's literally magicians sat in the jungle and there's people queuing to see these magicians. Mm. Now, of course, they don't call them the magicians. They call them the sheikh. Mm. And they look like Muslims. They have beards. They they dress like Muslims. They have the Quran. They mm. have, uh, you know, beads. They have the hat. They look like a sheikh. And maybe they're knowledgeable. Maybe they know Arabic. Maybe they even memorize Quran. Mm. But somewhere along the line, they've learned about sihr. And they're dealing with the jinn. And I've seen this, bro. You know, I've seen them, uh, you know, they would say that they're speaking to this jinn, they're speaking to that jinn. They would even say it. This is going to happen, that's going to happen. And people will, will come with different problems and try to get the magician to deal with that issue. So if you have a court case, or if you have an exam, or if you have any issue in your life, uh, maybe you, you, you're having an issue with uh, you can't have children, or maybe you want to marry somebody. Any of these issues, these so-called magicians can mm. fix it for you. But it's haram, bro, and it's shirk. And it's just fooling people. But people don't realize that when they get involved in these things, it takes you outside of Islam, bro. Mm. Does that make sense? Yeah. So this was kind of a very important point to me. And then when I came back from Sierra Leone to, to England, I spoke to my Libyan friend and I said, look, you Muslims, you've got power. So you no, wasn't see, Muslim at that point. And this happened. This Muslim gave me this thing and the policeman ran away and this other Muslim did this. And, mm. and my friend said, no, 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 this is haram. This is shirk. What are you doing? Mm. And I'm like, well, I'm not a Muslim. He said, no, no, I, we believe it's true. We believe these things can happen, of but course. it's haram in Islam. So I was like, what do you mean? So he sat me down and he showed me a video by Dr. Bilal Phillips. So that same night when I watched this lecture by Dr. Bilal Phillips, my friend gave me a copy of the Fortress of a Muslim. You know, the small yeah. uh, book of du'as. Some of them are ayah from the Quran and some of them are hadith. Yeah. Mm. Now we know that both are wahi, right? Of course. You know, Revelation. you know, and you know, but of course the Quran is a, 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 as an extra status, right? Definitely, because it's kitab Allah, yeah? And I was saying to my friend, this is different. This one is different from this. Like, mm. and, and he said, yeah, that's the Quran, that's the hadith. And yeah, then this is exactly the same impression that I got whilst reading the Hadith. It's interesting to read them, but it is not the same feeling. It is absolutely not comparable to experiencing the Quran. And mind you, I'm only reading a translation, but nevertheless, the Quran is so distinct. You can see within the Hadith that they are man-made after all. Turn the page, I'd read that and I'd read. And every time the, the, the ayah from the Quran, I just felt that it's different, bro. And I'm reading yeah. it in English, bro. Subhanallah. Right? So I got onto one ayah. You mean the transliteration or the translation? Translation and the transliteration. Okay. It's got the Arabic, the transliteration. And you just felt like it's different. And, 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 the, and the English, right? But even in the English, bro, I was like, this is different to that. For right? sure. And subhanAllah, bro, I, when I, um, I got to Surah Falak, right? And it speaks about, you know, those who are envious, they're blowing in knots, tying knots, you know, at the daybreak, etc. I, I started crying, bro, because I'd witnessed this in Sierra Leone. Wow. I'd seen them rolling, literally, these Tawiz things with Seher in. They mm. were naked, bro, uh, literally sat in the river, rolling the, the Seher. Literally, sometimes they would do it like what I now know to be sunset time. And sometimes they do it at sunrise, bro. And they're making the sihab and they're blowing, bro. SubhanAllah, I seen it, bro. And that ayah was the one that really sealed it for me. I said, this is the protection from this. And that's when I started to put my iman now in this little book. So I moved it from the Taoist thing. And I started to now, this, this little book went everywhere with me, bro. I was just reading the du'as, all the du'as, everything. You know, and that became the protection. All right, guys, and this is it for today's video. Very surprising to me personally. I didn't expect this at all. The video was advertised as I came from black magic into Islam. I thought maybe the guy was a Satanist prior to becoming a Muslim. However, he explained how within the Muslim world, you have still black magic to this very day. How ultimately the Muslim world in some parts has been infiltrated by the devil himself. And this 
this yet again is not surprising to me at all coming from a Christian Orthodox background because we say that the biggest devils are within the church. You have so many evil people infiltrating the church, infiltrating mosques and perverting the faith with satanic doctrines. As I said, my wife comes from Africa, I come from the Balkan and in both cases you still have magic prevalent to this very day. People forming little figures, people trying to hide bones within your clothing, putting spells on you and what not. It is still a very mythical and dangerous place. In the West, however, this magic apparently, allegedly, has died off and people do not believe it anymore. But it is still well life. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. John, in case you're watching, you're more than invited to come on here on this channel and have a live discussion about your story converting to Islam and about black magic, etc, etc. Guys, if you like the video, leave it a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed already, guys, please do so. And if you want to support this channel via Patreon, all the links are in the description box below. As always, may God bless you all. Much love and peace.